So how exactly do you use Speedify to make your Starlink faster and more reliable? I'm glad you asked. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus Combination. Just love that zing and the bergamot. So good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technical day, I would say. We're going to be talking a little bit about Speedify. A lot of you folks have been asking me about it because I've been using it for over a month now and I've been promoting it because it's just that good. And a lot of you have been asking me, how do I have mine set up and possibly how you can set up yours to obviously increase your speed. And for me, what's most important is increasing my reliability. So when I go live and I'm broadcasting on Fridays, usually with my wife, we don't have any outages, no spinning, spinning, spinning. I don't turn into like this Minecraft character or some crap like that, right? So we use Speedify to be able to bond multiple internet connections together so that we not only get faster speeds, but we're getting that reliability of multiple connections so that if one drops, the other one picks up. But not just that, we're not bonding at a session level, we are bonding at a packet level. What this means is if for some reason we go down in the middle of a stream, instead of having to redo the stream or restart the stream because it is down, packet base basically allows us to just continue going packet for packet. So if there's a packet that's lost, oh well. But what it also does is it allows for redundancy. So Speedify basically has AI that determines what you're doing on the computer. If you need something that has to do with speed, it's gonna give you all the speed that it can give you by bonding those multiple connections together. In comparison to if you're in a Zoom meeting, some kind of conference call, or if you're streaming or whatever, it knows that and says, oh, wait a second, we want to not only give them speed, but more importantly, we want the redundancy, the packet level redundancy, where we're going to mirror these packets, these bits of data, and send them down both tunnels or all three tunnels or however many connections you have bonded into the service so that you do not go down, no matter if one connection goes down or if one connection has some high latency involved because there's a server problem or whatever, it will go down the path of least resistance, let's just call it. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna jump over to my screen. I'm gonna show you how I set it up and then hopefully it'll give you some ideas on how you can set yours up to be most efficient. Once again, most reliable, faster speed, and obviously you're going to get security also. Why is that? Because it also gives you a VPN and it comes included. So, I mean, you're not gonna beat that. So you don't have to have a VPN and Speedify because Speedify is a VPN. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's jump over to my desktop here so you can see what's going on. Now, we can see that I have Speedify already open. It is not currently working, but what we want to do first is we want you to download the software. And this is very easy. Just go over to the Speedify site. And if we look here, you can see if we scroll down, this gives you a whole bunch of information about Speedify, what it does, what it doesn't do. You can see it's M2 support. It does have the 256-bit encryption, like I said before, with the VPN, auto priority, so on and so forth. Anyways, you come over here to download, and from the download page, you're going to decide what do you want to download. Do you need it for Windows, Mac OS, Linux? Do you need it for your iOS device, your iPad or Android? You would just click on the right one and download it. For me, I do have Windows, so that is what's currently open here. This is the Windows version. Now, it is currently disconnected. We're going to connect in just a second. But before I do, I want to show you that we have an Ethernet cable coming in. Because a lot of you guys want to know this, right? Some of you have been asking me, like, Joe, how do you set it up? What do you have? How many connections do you have? What are you doing? So I'm gonna show you that right now. We have an ethernet connection that is our Starlink connection. We also have a Wi-Fi connection going into our PC that is our T-Mobile connection. So once again, let's jump back over here. We can see this is ethernet, it says primary, and then we have T-Mobile, which says here also primary. I'm gonna to get to that in just a second. But let's go ahead and fire this up and see what it does. So 
It says testing servers. What it's going to do now is it's going to find out what is the closest server. Which server should we use to get the lowest latency or the best ping? So it decided on Miami. That's not bad because I'm in West Palm. That's only about 60 miles away. So that's perfect. That's a great spot. This says usage here. We also have latency. If I click on latency, it will show what the milliseconds are. What was the maximum? What is the minimum? And what it's currently at. So we can see the ethernet connection, which is Starlink, is at, let's say 67, 65, 63. Whereas T-Mobile, the latency is 47, 53, so on and so forth. This shows latency. If we go to usage, this will show us what the usage is. What is currently being used? Are we using a lot of data, a little data, or what? So we can see here that there's nothing going through because we're really not doing anything. Now there is stars here and what Speedify does, it classifies each connection with stars based on the reliability. Is this a reliable connection or is it not? Is it a connection that has been going down lately or not? Is it a connection that has very high latency or low latency. So it basically decides through AI, through this artificial intelligence, not only does it determine what you're doing with the service, but also the internet connection coming into it. How good is that connection? Is it a fast connection? Is it a slow connection? So on and so forth. So let's get back into it. Now we have this on. What I wanna do really quick is I wanna just show you a speed test, just so you can see this working. We see about 46 milliseconds, which isn't too bad. As far as the download speed, we see the Ethernet coming in about 100 megabits. That's for Starlink. And we see T-Mobile contributing about 20 megabits right around there. And we're combining, not too bad, we're at about 100, 138. Not bad, not bad at all. We can see we topped off here right around 168 megabits down. Now look at the upload speed. We're sitting at about 20 or so, but now look what it's giving us. We have a certain amount coming through, once again, Starlink, and then we have some coming through T-Mobile. And when we combine the two together, we're getting, let's call it 17 megabits up. So that is what we're coming in as a baseline. So I just wanted to show you how it aggregates the two together. Now, once again, if I had four connections, it would take all four and use all of them to be able to produce those download speeds as well as upload speeds. Now, I've seen upload speeds where it combines the two services when Starlink is doing really well. Probably right now we have a satellite moving away. But when they're doing really well, I've seen upload speeds over 36, close to 40 megabits up. We know that Starlink only gives us about 10 to 15. 18, 18 megabits up. So all the rest was T-Mobile. Once again, combining them together gave us faster speeds, but redundancy is what's most important to me. Speeds are great, but redundancy is even more important. So let's get back to my screen. And as we can see, we're connected right now through Atlanta 33. Sometimes this will change. If you turn it on and off, it'll connect through Miami sometimes for me. Sometimes it'll connect through Atlanta. The reason being is Atlanta is where my pop is, my point of presence. So that's what it's seeing as being the closest or the lowest ping before it was Miami. So it really changes, depends on when you turn it on and off and it automatically finds them. Now, we see here that it's currently set for the Ethernet as primary. Now, the Ethernet is Starlink. That is fine. Now, we do also see that T-Mobile is set for primary. And a lot of people have asked me, why is that? So the difference is just simply this. When you set it to auto, obviously you're letting the software decide for you. Speedify will automatically determine the different lines and the class of lines, let's say, primary, secondary, or whatever. I'm anal retentive, I don't allow that, so I'm going to set it myself. I don't set anything to automatic ever, not even in my life, not even my cameras. Nothing is set to auto, right? Once again, I'm anal. Now, if I was to set, for example, my Starlink to primary, and T-Mobile as secondary, what that means is setting it as secondary, it will use T-Mobile to boost speeds, number one, but also to fail over. So what will happen is, is if there is a problem, it will now bounce over to T-Mobile to pick up the slack, but it kind of goes a little bit lighter on it. So if it doesn't need it, okay, it's going to use the primary all the time. 
and then it'll bounce over to the secondary once again to either increase speeds, lower latency, or if there is an actual problem with Starlink, it will fail over to the T-Mobile. That's when you set it to secondary. For me, I set them both to primary because I want them to go full bore. 100%, right? Because both are unlimited data. So we don't have to worry about that. Now, the other option is setting it to backup. When you set something to backup, what that means is if it needs to fail over and there's nothing else available, it will use that connection. But it will not bond that connection. So it's not going to give you faster speeds. It's not going to give you anything besides the redundancy if there is a failure. OK, so this is a perfect setup if you do have a little SIM card that you're using and you are paying per gigabit. You say, OK, we're going to allow you to use it only as backup. So only turn on, only use data when it's absolutely imperative. That's the way you would set it up. But once again, for me, being unlimited on both, I'm going to set them both up as primary. So anyways, let's jump back into our screen here. And obviously we can see that we're set to primary here for the Starlink. And then if we go to T-Mobile, it is also set down here to primary. And as we can see, we have primary, secondary, backup, and never. And then it gives you a full description of what they are. So while we're here, let's go ahead and do one more speed test. Let's go ahead and run that and see what we get. All right, we have 60 milliseconds, which isn't too bad latency. And if we look over here at the graph, we can see we're downloading a maximum of 170 megabits using a combination of the two connections. Now we're at about 130, 120. It really depends on the Starlink. Is it boosting up or not? Not too bad, but look at this upload speed. Like I was telling you before, if my T-Mobile is really working well, we're going to see these type of upload speeds. Absolutely incredible for me. 33.9, let's call it 34 megabits. Absolutely amazing, right? Absolutely amazing. You're looking at 34 megabits. Unbelievable. Bear in mind, just like a little point of reference here, just two years ago when I was using Uverse, the absolute trash from AT&T, I was getting 1.5 megabits up. Then with Starlink, we were seeing speeds of about 18, sometimes 20 megabits up. Then it fell back down to 10 megabits up. But even now, when we're getting 12 to 15 megabits up, when we see T-Mobile really doing well and it's nice and clear outside and it can really give some great upload speeds, we're seeing things like this, 34 megabits. There was one day when I saw 36 and I think it got close to 40 megabits up. And this is what's so amazing when it comes to bonding these connections together. Because not only are you getting the redundancy, for me, that is very important when I go live and stream, but you're also getting those speeds. So when T-Mobile is doing really well and Starlink is doing really well, I've seen speeds of just about 300 megabits down and close to that 36, 40 megabits up, which is bizarre to me. It is life changing. Trust me. It is life changing. Anyways, there was a couple of questions I want to answer for you guys because I got them in the comments and I said, you know what? I'm going to just answer them in the video because I'm sure some of you guys have these questions. So one of them was how many connections or how many internet connections can you feed into Speedify? Now I asked the folks over there and they said there's been people that done 10 or even more. And it's kind of moot at that point. How many connections can you actually have? Maybe a T-Mobile, a Verizon, possibly an AT&T, a Starlink. I mean, there's only so many, but I'm currently using two. Now I'm going to install another one, which will be the AT&T garbage connection just because I want to do it. But to do so, you need to make sure that you can get the connection into the computer. And I can talk about that in the next video. If you want it in the comment area, let me know that you want more Speedify information and I will make more and I'll show you exactly how to do it. It's a little piece of hardware, like 10 bucks, and it'll allow you to do that. So hopefully that helps. Also, I've gotten a question about milliseconds or latency or your ping. Will your ping go up if you're using Speedify? And the answer to that is yes. By how much, it really varies by which server you connect to. Speedify has thousands of servers all over the world. If you connect to one that's more hops away from you, well, it's going to take longer to get the data there and back. Because remember, not only is it bonding, it's a bonding service, all right, that gives you the redundancy and the speed, 
but it's also a VPN that gives you 256 bit encryption. So to do so, the encryption takes a slight bit of time, but more importantly, connecting to another server is going to add hops into the mix, which is also going to increase your latency by a little bit. So I see latencies of anywhere from about 40 to 50 milliseconds without it. It's usually about 38 to 45 milliseconds anyways. So for me, I'm seeing about maybe four to 10 to eight milliseconds increase when using it. But the difference between using it and not using it, as you can see, is massive. It is worth the tiny amount of latency that I am increasing. Now, also, I've gotten a question. Can you use Speedify for gaming? Well, just understanding how latency goes, right? Can you? You answer the question for me. Yes, you kind of can. But remember, it is going to increase your latency a little bit. The difference is you're not going to go down. When using a non-terrestrial network, a satellite connection, remember there's going to be these little micro outages that happen. Every time one of those outages happen, you are not going to be moving in your game, especially if you're playing a fast action first person shooter. That's just how it is. But if you do use Speedify and you are bonded together, you're not going to have those little micro outages. You're going to be on all the time. You might be slower by just a tiny bit. Like I said, your latency might be a little bit higher, but you're not going to go down. And for me, that is massive, especially if you're going to do any kind of streaming of your games. Remember, you're not going to be going down during those streams. You're not going to become pixelated as the satellites move away. And now it has to reconnect or do a new handshake between the two. So for me, using it and adding that slight bit of latency just simply makes sense. Does it make sense to you? That's something you'll have to decide. Anyways, the nice folks over there at Speedify gave me a promo code. The promo code is simply J Christina. When checking out over at Speedify, you will get 20% off. Also, to make it even easier, I put a link down below in the pinned comment as well as the description. The link is jchristina.com forward slash speed. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash speed. It will automatically inject the 20% off for you. And then if they have a promo going on, I think they have a summer sale going on right now. Anyways, if there is a promo code, they will add that to it in addition to. So definitely check them out. Go to speedify.com. I personally think it is worth it. I've been using it for about five, six weeks now. I've been doing a lot of live feeds, a lot of those live chats with you guys on Friday. So join me at about 8.30 p.m. usually on Friday. I'm not sure about this Friday because we got stuff going on, Memorial Day, I don't know, something going on. Anyways, but most Fridays, 8.30 p.m., join me and we can talk about any of this, all right? We just hang out, just shoot it. We hang out with my wife and we just have a good time, usually about an hour and a half, two hours. So join us. Anyways, guys, if you want to just say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down here. You can click on that. And if you do, give a dollar or two. That would be fantastic. If not, it's okay. Just simply become a member of the channel. That would be absolutely awesome. I would really appreciate it. And I would love to have you here. Also, throw the video a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. And then click this button over here so I go live and there's a new video going out. You will be notified of it immediately. And if you want more Starlink content, I put together a Starlink playlist or a Starlink podcast or whatever you want to call it. There's a link right here. There's over 150 videos, all helpful how-tos tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and most importantly, why. It's all about the why. Finally, I'm still doing the 3000 push-up challenge for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. All of those young kids that have cancer, we are trying to help them out. I'm looking to get a dollar per push-up. I'm doing 3000 push-ups, guys. I'm actually doing more. But anyways, there's a donation button right here if you'd like to contribute. YouTube told us that every single penny donated will go directly to St. Jude. They won't even take a dollar or a penny or anything of it. No fraction. That's always nice. Thank you, YouTube, for that. And lastly, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.